This week, two stories on the home front. Later on, we'll be looking into that lively topic of conversation in hotel bars, at bus stops, and even in suburban lounge rooms. Whatever happened to the great Australian male? That simple, sun-bronzed giant with the short back and sides. In short, the fair Dinkum Aussie. For all those who can or care to remember 30 years ago, this was the fashion plate of the well-dressed Australian male. As you can see, uh, the double-breasted striped suit with the wide lapels and the 22 to 24 inch trouser cuffs. And incidentally, that suit was priced at the daring four guineas. Well, since 1935, not only have men's styles changed, but so it seems have also men. The 1965 look for the modern city man, a slim line, a rather perky outfit, which 30 years ago would have uh, been called quite odd, even sissy. And the same sort of change has taken place in the country man, who today leaves his sweat and jodhpurs and open neck shirt back on the property and comes to town looking like this. What we're leading up to is the question, is the Australian man, man enough? Is he the more rugged, outdoor, he-man looking type as we see here, and has, as most of the world does picture him to be? Or is he more correctly uh, portrayed by this image, where fashion has now gone to his head with a vengeance? Uh, people find it very important uh, to look uh, say trim and neat and things like that. Uh, and their way of doing it is by having a hair cut very close to the head, which costs eight bob, uh, and have a clean shaven face. Now, uh, to me, this does not represent clean or being clean. Uh, I, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, if you just have a good wash with a bit of soap, and the job would be just a good done. Luckily for the hairdresser, not every man shares that view. And during my monthly trim, Nev the barber spoke about the individuality in hairstyles today. I asked if his clientele looked as manly as they used to. Well, I don't know about that. If, if you really want to, to be manly, it's big and sunburnt and short back and sides and all that, but uh, these fellas, they dress so different to what uh, well, we did in the old days. I, I always remember a chap would come in, he'd be just a pretty conservative type, and in fact, if you went for an individual I think people used to laugh at you a little bit, but uh, with these lads, it never worries them. Uh, and they think this is something that they have to attain to, to get this style that makes them a little bit different from uh, other people. Sometimes this does look uh, rather feminine, as we often see them going past the outside, and uh, a lot of the customers, especially if it's an older person, he'll suddenly turn in and say, look at that, what was it? Now, what about the talk in the barber's chair? Has this changed at all? It's, it's changed in a way, when I say it, it's on the manly side, it's uh, not the old racehorse, uh, the fighters or anything like that, which was the general topic of conversation. Now it's, it moves more into, uh, oh, I say, clothes, uh, music. They're more interested in telling you what type of shoes you're wearing and they can tell you you've only got to have a new pair of shoes on. They'll tell you whether they're trad or where you bought them actually and what you paid from, which... Uh, and do you think Australian men are manly enough, as you find them in the barber's chair? Oh, yes, uh, in a different way to what it, uh, it was years ago, admittedly. Uh, we don't get the, the type that we had before, the real rugged surfies and the, uh, the footballers to such a great an extent. I doubt if they get as much sun or get out as much as we do, but uh, I don't think they're exactly uh, really less manly although they may look it. Many will say a score for manliness is best affected in a struggle of men against men. And although Australian sportsmen remain the envy of many throughout the world, their ranks in football and rowing and surfing clubs are dwindling and the numbers are increasing of those who prefer to sit on the sidelines.
While Australian cities are rapidly changing their shape, so are Australian men, says Mr Gordon Young, President of the National Fitness Council of New South Wales. Fitness, he says, has lost to fatness. Three surveys were made, uh, one in 27, another in uh, 37, 10 years later, and another one more recently, 54. This would seem to show in the first survey that the Australians were growing taller, somewhat more wiry, rangy. But the more recent survey shows that he's getting heavier as well as taller. And it's this feature of overweight that's giving quite a great deal of concern. A person who is grossly overweight may reduce his life expectancy by 70%. He'll die that much younger. Even moderately overweight can be reduced by 40%. So the Australian male is not only getting fatter, but he's dying off sooner. Yes. Now in Australia, I think one in three die of heart trouble. In America, 55% die of heart trouble. And it would seem from scientific evidence that there is no doubt that our lack of exercise has something to do with this rise in this form of difficulty. The axiom, clothes make the man, is a questionable one these days for those who regard as unmanly tight trousers and lace-fronted shirts. But this shop caters only for the 70 guinea executive look. And even this is changing. Slimmer lines, narrower cuffs, and a sheen finish, says fashion expert John Bentley, is correct boardroom dress today. The tycoon's wife, he said, now often insists on being with her husband when he buys a new suit, which has led to his acceptance of fashions as modern as last year's teenager. While the executive suite might have its daring dash of French blue or gunstock brown, it's difficult to see some of these styles clinching a deal, even during the cocktail hour. No modern pharmacy these days can really claim to be modern without its full quota of men's toiletries, which are fast demanding equal space with women's bottled secrets. For men with long hair, or for those who just want to keep it, there's an answer. Those to whom the sweet smell of success is vital haven't been overlooked. Though the price of 31 pounds 10 a bottle would seem to limit the demand. And in this pressure-packed age we live in, the easier it is to apply, the better. Men's fashions have long included the daintiness of cufflinks, but apparently the traditional plain brassy ones are not enough anymore to hold our shirt sleeves together. And men's wear stores report big sales of links, which not only tell you the time at the flick of a wrist, but also allow the more fastidious to glitter with every gesture. Australian men have a reputation of being undemonstrative towards women, says Squire magazine, the newest for men only publication on the bookstalls. Its editor says it's an unfounded reputation these days, along with other criticisms about self-consciousness, which once precluded the Australian male from looking at men's fashions in department stores or reading new recipes in a cookery book. This new sophisticated outlook, says editor Jack Delissa, is reflected in the magazine's 29,000 circulation in its first 12 months. Uh, when I started the magazine, I felt that the uh, attitude of the Australian male had changed uh, and that he was more, for want of a better word, civilized in the American and European sense and that uh, he was a little bit tired of the bang-bang, tough he-man type of publication that uh, has been the men's magazine in Australia for so long. You feel the sweaty, chesty, virile Australian male is a dying race? Yes, definitely. Uh, 
As an Australian entity, yes. He's uh, gradually becoming no more so than, uh, than an American. Of uh, course, there are always um, uh, workers who, who work with their muscles, although there'll be fewer and fewer with automation, and uh, consequently there'll be uh, fewer and fewer of the, the, the tough he-men around and more and more of the, um, what they would call the sissies. Now, what about sex? You haven't mentioned sex so far. Is this old-fashioned? You mean Australian man's approach to sex, has that changed? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, I think that you're, you're finding uh, uh, fewer Australians uh, standing around talking to... Uh, Australian men to, to standing around at parties talking to each other. They're, they're beginning to, um, to talk more easily with women and hence they're beginning to associate more with women and uh, their attitude to sex is uh, changing from the uh, um, what you might call the public boys school approach and, and more towards the uh, the coeducational school approach which is um, in my mind uh, an improvement mm. uh, I felt the best way to tackle it is honestly and, and straightforward and uh, this is a way that the uh, Australian male hasn't had his, uh, his uh, sex in magazines. It's all been uh, uh, done with a snide uh, dig in the ribs and a laugh behind the hand. And uh, the, um, the, the, the sophisticated direct approach to sex is uh, something new to him. A more forcible point of view in more ways than one was made by Mr. Walter Kowalski, whose profession of human bone crushing led to his self-styled title of Killer Kowalski, the world's best wrestler. With his six feet seven and 19 stone, Killer's statements were indeed heavily weighted. Now I say average Australian male is a very poor criterion for the rest of the males of the world. But Killer, do you, do you really believe what you're saying? Do I really believe it? I mean, sure. <laughs> oh, all right. yeah, you convince me you believe well, it. I can convince you, just because that's the proof yeah. of my determination and of my own belief and my convictions. But let's face it, it's gotten to a point here in Australia where the dominant character is the woman. Has the woman replaced man? Do you think that all Australian men should try to be as muscle-bound as you are? Masculinity is not represented just by physical stature mental and emotional. The combination of a good physique, mental capabilities, strong, powerful emotions. Maybe that would be the w best way to judge. The man is emotionally strong, very masculine. I am proud to say that I am such a man. Killer, you have a big body. Has anyone ever accused you of having a big head as well? You know, you opened up just a few minutes ago with a very sarcastic question. Now, would, like, would you like me to have that statement you just made driven back uh, at you? Not particularly. <laughs> well, would you kindly retract that, what you just said? I, I just said, have people accused you of this? No, they have not. Oh, good. You just have. No, no. And if you don't watch yourself, you're going to have a very little head. Because I happen to have a few little uh, arts about voodoo, and I can shrink a person's head with my own two powerful hands. Be careful, Frank. I mean, uh, after all, you may develop into a man. Excuse right now, but of course, excuses can be erased. Mm -hmm.